There we go. TGIF. Thank God it's Fish. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. This is your Dallas Cowboys Fish Report for a Friday. Ten things. That's right. Ten things. Uh, these are not uh, hot takes. These are simply uh, fact-based opinions. As always, straight dope, no bullshit, and prizes available. And here we go. Uh, including, by the way, Jimmy versus Belichick. What? Kind of. Why are we kissing Belichick's butt? This happened at least twice in the last couple of days. Bill Belichick, whose name has come out of Jerry Jones's mouth a couple of times. Okay, which which puts it in the news. That's fine. That's fine. Puts it in the Cowboy news conversation. That's fine. I got I got Mike Florio saying. Some teams should hire Bill Belichick as its special teams advisor. They're missing the boat. How could they not? Uh, one of the guys at Sports Illustrated is saying it's an embarrassment that the that an owner didn't hire Bill Belichick. What are you talking about? I, I own the team. I interviewed Bill Belichick. I decided that he's too much of a bully. He's too much of a grouch. He wanted to come in here and run everything. He's too old and he hadn't done anything successful in five years. I get to not hire him if I don't want to. Um, as a head coach, how about hiring him as a, I, I already have a, don't I have a highly, in Dallas, don't I have a highly paid He's not a special teams coach. He's a special teams coordinator. He's paid like a coordinator. Now, on an informal, friendly basis, can Bones Fossil call Bill Belichick? I, that would be nice. I would like to think so. I would like to think that the ties that bind to go back, Jim Fossil, Bones' dad, I'd like to think he had a relationship with Belichick. And we're all in this together and... But dear media, trying to kiss Belichick's ass or carry water for him. He's unemployed for a reason. Now, you want advisors? Aha. We've explained to you the Jimmy Johnson relationship um, with Jerry as it pertains to the advisory board. It's not official. He doesn't have an office. He doesn't get paid. Um, there's no great documentation after, I will say this, after the Cowboys draft a defensive lineman, I bet you Jerry will come out and say, uh, uh, uh Mr. Mike, I will tell you this. Uh, I did talk to old coach Johnson. Uh, uh Jimmy loves his kid. There, you, there will be that. I predict, but you want to know WWJD, what would Jimmy do? In regard to this idea that Bill Belichick should should uh, whore himself out, did I say that? As uh, pay me, and I'll give you some special teams advice. WWJD. Jimmy's not charging Jerry to answer the phone. And Douglas Sloan, we're talking Belichick. No, actually, we're talking Jimmy. And you know what, Douglas, thanks to you, that's the last comment I'm reading tonight. And I'm serious. WWJD, you know what Jimmy does when a coach wants advice, wants counsel? He invites him on his boat. And they go fish for Marlin. And they talk football. He doesn't charge him. He doesn't call the media and ask them, hey, will you do me a solid and get the word out there that somebody should pay me to be a consultant? And by, will you also insult all the owners by saying how stupid they were not to hire me? WWJD. If Bones Fossil wants special teams advice from Jimmy Johnson, or if Mike McCarthy does, or if Mike Zimmer does, Go on down to the boat. 
WWJD. That's items one and two. Item three. It does look increasingly uh, like Jonathan Brooks, the University of Texas, is the guy. Cowboys have inside information because our man, Dr. Cooper, Marsha's old high school uh, pal, did the surgery. They feel good about it. Here's the question. First round? No. Not a running back in the first round. You just went, and th th this is just gossip at this point. The Cowboys aren't saying this, but there's a lot of mock drafters that are catching on to the Johnson Brooks thing, fine, and hooking them up to Dallas in the first round. No. I bet you, number one, the Cowboys don't have a first round grade on him for what that's worth. Number two, there's other running backs, including probably Jonathan Brooks, who are going to be available in the second round, I believe. And if it's not Jonathan Brooks, it could be the next guy, the next guy, and the next guy. Braylon Allen, third round. Whoever. We just went through Zeke as a first round running back and paid him a fortune and it almost but didn't work. And then you went through Tony Pollard, a fourth round pick and paid him a semi fortune. And that didn't work either. So now you're going to do it again? No, 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 no. Second round, Brooks. Third round, Allen. And on and on and on. Fifth round and sixth round and seventh round. The devaluation of the running back is justified. And it's not just about paying him $16 million, which you almost should never do. It's also about paying the price of a first round draft pick for a running back. No. I hope this idea, it's not, the idea of Brooks in the first round is not coming from the Cowboys as far as I know. I hope it's not coming from the Cowboys as far as anybody else knows. How about that? Mike Thompson, Zeke was derailed by extortion. Well, you know, except he won two rushing titles after that. So I don't know that he was derailed. Uh, he, he, in the end, was derailed because running backs fall off a cliff at a certain time. Heavy lifting star running backs fall off a cliff. Pollard derailed by injury. Maybe, but he's not a $10 million running back. And never was, never should have been. There's better, cheaper, smarter ways to do this. Uh, is, is there a unique guy that comes along once along, once in a while? B. Teeling, Uncle Fish Premium, asked about Bijan. I, I just think he's, I, I think Bijan is Saquon Barkley. The only problem is because of injuries, Saquon Barkley isn't even Saquon Barkley. Item four, it's Friday, prize day, so guess what? Uh, I hope you've seen these. I don't have them sitting out handy. Uh, I've done the three paintings. Uh, They're highly popular. The triplets is one of those. Triplets is probably the most popular of the three. And I'm giving away the threesome tonight. Threesome? Giving away the uh, threesome tonight. Oh, the 88 Club is a good one. So I need you, if you're interested in the paintings, to simply tight end, type in paintings, spell it right, the state in which you live, and you have to be a subscriber. Like Stephen Burke's paintings, Georgia. Okay, and uh, we, we will allow this contest to run over the course of the weekend. We'll announce the winner on Monday. Uh, trust me. The, the, uh, these are fish prints, they are original, and they're damn good. If you have a cowboy, ah, I'm biased, but I mean it. If you have a uh, kind of a cowboy, you know, clubhouse, man cave kind of a thing, believe me, trust me. Oh, and by the way, as long as we're talking about uh, our friend Broken Halo, who runs the Uncle Fish store, which is right below, these just came in. What's that? Well, it didn't just came in because obviously it already has a ring around it. Look at this baby. Go get you a set of these. These are, look how, these are, these are manly. Straight dope, no bullshit.
coasters made out of solid manness. So go get some of that uh, in the Uncle Fish store. There's Friday prize day. Item five, Mel Kuyper comes out and says in his mock for the Cowboys, Guyton in the first round, Brooks in the second round. The, the only thing that jumps out at me on that Uh, it's awfully regional. I mean, it feels like, so all the best players are within three three hours that away or three hours that away. Are we sure? I, I sometimes wonder, and I'm not accusing Mel Kuyper of taking a shortcut here, but I do sometimes wonder, do, do, we, do we attach a guy to his area sometimes just because it feels cozy? I saw one mock draft where like, all oh, the first... Like the first five guys all had some Texas tie, and I'm going, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, we, I know, believe me, I know we grow them. I get it. Guyton in the first round, play and plug starter, you'd like to think. Brooks in the second round, play and plug starter, you'd like to think. <laughs> Item six. Uh, Brian Broaddus and I used to talk about this a lot on the air on 105.3 The Fan. By the way, congratulations to Sean and RJ, 13th. And year anniversary today uh that that's that's as good a, a sports morning show not just in dallas as there is in the country now you what do you mean sports i mean sports i'm not saying they're as good as howard stern but howard stern isn't a sports show sports radio in the morning as good as it gets sean and rj and that's all i'll say about that so Broaddus and I used to talk about the, the, uh, the nature of a general manager and how he operates depending on where he is in his career. For instance, uh, I know this to be a fact. There will be, over the course of time, general managers who will want to draft a rookie quarterback, not just because they like him or they need him, but because they know Nathaniel Davies, it's my daughter's 13th birthday today. Happy birthday, uh, little Davies. Because if we draft a rookie quarterback, we can convince our owner, you know, Mr. Owner, we need more time. We, the kid's just a rookie. I need more time. We, I need more time. Therefore, don't fire me. And I, what it brought is he's called, he's called it like uh, protecting his desk. So like, like the general manager wants to protect his desk by making moves that might be good for the team, but are definitely good for himself. That we've kind of talked about it like, hey, that general manager, he's got Dalton Tree. Hey, Dalton. He's got a lake house to pay off, and he's got two kids that need to go to the orthodontist. He can't afford to get fired right now. And there are general managers, I'm telling you, that have made moves based on that. That's why the Mike Tannenbaum experiment for me on ESPN, former Jets general manager. Oh, I know. Yeah, you, you make decisions like this. So that's why you're former. I, I know. But he was a general manager in the NFL. And he's suggesting that the Cowboys should go draft a quarterback at 24. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Hold on a second. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. My question for Mike Tannenbaum, if I had him sitting right here, come on in, Mike. Welcome to the show. Because it's easy to say that on TV. It's easy for a TV poof to say, Cowboys need to draft a quarterback at 24. I'm not about at this moment whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. If Listen, if you if the Cowboys draft Aaron Rodgers at 24, well, okay, maybe not Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I don't know. If, if the Patrick's, if the Cowboys go, listen, this Michael Penix Jr., he's, he's the bomb. He's going to be there at 24. And, and, uh, and Will McClay is telling Jerry and Steven, I, I mean, I don't know why everybody else doesn't see it, but I see it. He's, he's Patrick Mahomes or whatever. Fine. But this is about a different thing. This is about a different argument. No, Cam Newton. Adam Davidson, is Cam Newton a possibility for what? 
To do what? What Cam Newton is a possibility of is being the next T.O. or the next Shady McCoy, um, where he just he says something, uh, the next uh, Antonio Brown, where he says something zany once a week so he can hear his name on the news. That's what Cam Newton's doing, unfortunately. The question for, for Tannenbaum and the idea of drafting a quarterback at 24, and you know the background with Dak. We don't have to go through that. You understand the reason why. Are you saying that, Mike, because you're on TV? Or would you have the balls to do it if you were a general manager? That's the difference. Gregory S., isn't Trey Lance our quarterback pick this year? Yes, it's a great point, and I'll get to that in a moment, as a matter of fact. But remember, he's not under contract for next year. So you, you haven't solved anything yet. So that's the thing about protecting my desk, paying for the braces, keeping the lake house. Would a general manager really do it? Or is this just a TV general manager saying he would. It's kind of like spending other people's money. It's real easy for all of us to, to tell a, an owner what they should do with their money. It is their money. BJ, Uncle Fish Premium, Trey was, is supposed to get his picks. That's an option. As, and as soon as Minnesota calls and says, we'll give you a three and a four for Trey Lance, you should probably do it. Stephen Burks, Fish, uh, not May for it's May 2nd. They have told me their plan is to not, and by the way, it's not an extension. They could sign Trey Lance to an extension anytime they wanted to. They have until May 2nd to pick up his fifth year option. That's $22 million for 2025, which they can do. They've told me they're not planning on doing it. And if you did it, and then you signed Dak Prescott, now you got a backup quarterback making $22 million. That's the problem they've created for themselves. Dean Graham, Uncle Fish Premium. Are there other options with Trey Lance besides picking up the fifth year option? Yes. Uh, we've reported at CowboysSI.com, Dallas would like to sign him long-term period. But the original idea is, what if we sign, what, Trey, we're going to sign Dak. What if we sign Dak and you? And you be that guy. I probably would say no, but that, that, that was a cowboy idea and still could be DB Cooper. We wasted a fourth round pick on trade. Not yet. How, how do you know if it's a, what you've never seen him play? We don't know yet, but you're not giving him $22 million on. You can't, you can't give him $22 million on May 2nd. You've never seen, they haven't seen him play either. Kramer Maho. Checking in from Hawaii. Thanks, Uncle Fish, with the straight dope. No bullshit. Hit the likes, will you, people? Thank you. Please do hit the likes. Also, uh, would you subscribe to what we do here? It's absolutely free and worth every penny. DB, there's a reason he's not playing. Well, the reason he's not playing uh, is, is named Dak. Um, Tony Catalina, writing about the Cowboys, says... How about quarterback of the future ideas late in the draft? And I'm not going to pretend, you know, you can get the T-shirt. I watch film, which is a self-parody, by the way. Jordan Travis, Florida State. I don't know. Joe Milton, Tennessee. I don't know. Austin Reed, Western Kentucky. Is it Western Kentucky? And I believe in throwing darts at the quarterback position. The problem with drafting a quarterback in round six, again, unless you love him, and they sure did love Ben DiNucci. Hey! Now you got four quarterbacks here that you don't know anything about. You're committed to four quarterbacks now. Um, oh, okay. Here's, uh, if I can pull this up, here's some of the goodies. Here is, there's the three paintings. Not actual size. Can you see that? 
So it's the Urban, it's the 88 Club, and it's the Triplets. And those are my paintings. They're uh, eight by 11 or something like that. And uh, those can and will be yours. Somebody's going to win those. And then we mentioned uh, the coasters. We got coasters. We got mugs. And we got koozies. Look at that hungry lion koozie. Mm -hmm. There you go. So... I don't know. I'm in love with Austin Reed, Western Kentucky. Bring him on in. And he's your fourth string quarterback. Mm. <laughs> Item eight. Uh, we got the kid sweat. Six foot four, 366 pounds, alleged uh, uh, arrested for DWI in Austin, football player, University of Texas. Some people think he's a run stopper extraordinaire. Of course, we've heard that around here before. Some people think he's a fourth round pick. And uh, Dane Brugler, uh, draft expert, talked about how he's talked to teams that, you know, he's kind of a class clown, kind of a party, was kind of a party animal that he's a class clowny kind of guy. You can be a class clown guy. In fact, it's kind of good. There's room for that. Roll on, Fish. I have the 88 Club painting. I have the Triplets painting. And I have the Urban painting on my cowboy wall. That's nice work, Fish. Good. Uh, maybe you'll win it this weekend. We'll announce it Monday. If not, go get you some. Does party, partier mean problem? If you got kids at home, if you got a 16-year-old right now listening to this, you might have to explain this in, in greater depth when I'm done here. Jeff T helps me make my point. You can get a DWI and not be a criminal. You can make a mistake. What the Cowboys and the NFL, and VJ's right about Second Chance Valley Ranch, we used to call it. Uh, Jerry has, an, has a particular affection for that kind of player. He does. There's some teams that will scratch him off their board. And, and I'm saying, if you liked him on Saturday, then he got a DWI on Sunday, and on Monday you say you don't like him anymore, I think you're making a mistake as a team. Because, because I don't think a 22-year-old getting a DWI is necessarily a death sentence for him. What you need to go do is double back on the research you've been doing on him for 18 months, 15 months. Go double back. Go check back. Go, go look look at it again. What did we miss? Go go interview his. Go call his coach. Go call the trainer. Go call. And I'm serious. Go call the bartenders in Austin. Seriously, go find out about him. It, is he a partier or is he a problem? You, you get to a point, uh, you, you drive under the influence habitually, different deal. I want no party yet. One mistake, which of course could have turned tragic, just like Rasheed Rice, he could have killed 12 people. He was going 119 miles an hour, weaving through traffic, racing his buddy in a car that he was also, that Rasheed Rice was responsible for both cars. He had rented one and owned the other. I'm not saying, I'm not saying Rasheed Rice needs, that, that his life needs to be over either. But rather than take the Longhorns defensive tackle sweat and just crumple up his resume and throw it in the trash can. The smart team is going to circle back and find out more. And maybe get a guy who's a class clown, not a criminal. A uh, bunch of stories out there about uh, Gilmore's future. As I've said here, if he wants a two-year deal, he's probably not, probably not coming back here. Because that's not the way the, these cowboys at this time are built. 
So there's, he could sign with the Eagles, and that would really stick it to the Cowboys. He could sign with the 49ers, that would really stick it to the Cowboys. And you know what? That doesn't enter the Cowboys' thinking at all. Not one iota are the Cowboys thinking, we, we better sign Gilly. Otherwise, we might have to play against him. That, that conversation hadn't even happened. They're so far away from that level of thinking. So forget about that one. Um, Gilly has every right to go where, at this point in his career, at 33, where the money is and where a championship opportunity is. By the way, the second thing can happen here. They could be good. But the first thing didn't happen in here for Gilmore. They're they are not going to pay Gilmore. I might say this too. Why hasn't he signed yet? I said this uh, at the beginning of free agency. The, the, the surgery on his shoulder is going to slow teams' excited pursuit of him, naturally. Good locker room guy, good player, good guy. But if he's asking the Cowboys for a two-year contract, the Cowboys are, are saying no. And finally, item 10, Richie Witt writes this in his column uh, today at CowboysSI.com, and this is true. I want us to think about this. This is a little beyond football. We do this at Christmas, don't we? Oh, yeah, everybody's so nice to each other. We're opening doors for each other, and we're letting pe people have our parking spot. And, and this, that Christmas spirit lasts, uh, you know, what? Three weeks. Three weeks of Christmas spirit. We got that on Wednesday. At least in Texas, in my experience, and maybe uh, maybe all over, the eclipse. We were all on the same. We were all on the same human team. For four minutes on Wednesday, it was so lovely. We were all we were all on the same human team. Um, now, some humans are more human than others. The number of people on Twitter who said. It was cool, but my eyes hurt. You're not supposed to look at it. That was a little disappointing that uh, humankind still hasn't educated itself to how to look at an eclipse, how, how to observe. But it was so lovely. For four minutes, we had peace. This side of the aisle and that side of the aisle together. The reds and the blues, the liberals and the conservatives, the men and the women, the tall and the short, the fat and the thin, the, the, the dog sleeping with cats. It was beautiful anarchy. And then in minute number five, we all hated each other again. <laughs> we, we need, I, I wish we'd have, dear God, can we have an eclipse every day? A four minute eclipse that brings us all together, fish out.